we will have next case of elderly lady with newly diagnosed gastric tumor. She presented with increasing epigastric pain and also teary stool in November with an anemia requiring transfusion. Private OGD at that time showing a 5 cm tumor with ulceration but without active bleeding at the cardia and the pathology is ulcerdebris. Another contrast CT was done showing a large 13 times 12 times 14 cm soft tissue mass with contrast enhancement in the epigastrium extending from the pancreas and also eroding into the gastric body. Here is the CT images for the tumor. So today we will have contrast enhanced EUS and also FMB with Procore. Uh, this case have huge mass uh, in the space between pancreas body and tail and the gastric wall. So I inserted my echo endoscope. Generally I use linear echo endoscope. I, these days I seldom use a radial scope, a linear scope. We can do imaging and we can do biopsy. Most of the functions are available. So uh, my nurses never give me a radial scope, just a linear, linear, linear. Yeah. I, <laughs> I follow that order. <laughs> uh, now I am in the mid part of the stomach. Uh, we are looking at the liver here, left lobe of the liver. Yes. If I rotate uh, posteriorly, then uh, I may see some of the pancreatic tissue. I guess uh, this area qu is quite suspicious for pancreatic tissue. But if I rotate a little bit more, then suddenly this mass comes into view. This is huge mass. And uh, inside there, there is some cystic cavity and uh, some blood flow and the echogenicity is quite heterogeneous. This is a very large lesion. To this, is this lesion, we need to adjust the penetration and if you measure the dimension, probably from here to here is uh, more than 11, 11 cm. Yeah. So a very large cystic, uh, large and huge mass. And if you see just this plane, then it looks like it is located outside of the stomach. Uh, this is a gastric wall, yeah. and this side also gastric wall. But the main region is located outside of the gastric wall. So it may look like a pancreatic or retroperitoneal lesion. Uh, but if we trace this lesion a little bit more, this, you can see some, a little bit of pancreatic tissue here, and the splenic vessels are here. Uh, I'm trying to trace the lesion. Suddenly, we can see another hypoechoic mass here and also here and the here. These are all masses. If you just focus on this uh, near side mass, I think uh, everybody probably agree that this lesion actually connected with the muscular layer of not this side, on the other side. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if you <laughs> see this area, yeah. yeah. It is connected to to proper muscle layer of gastric wall here. And if we trace this lesion a little more by talking, then this lesion is connected to the outside mass here. So the lesion actually started from gastric wall and it shows exophytic growth to the extra gastric cavity. And also this lesion showed, uh, in the meantime, I did some examination, and uh, this lesion also showed intragastric protrusion too. So, uh, just a moment, just a moment, yeah. If I go, yeah, a little bit, yeah. This is gastric PM. Here we can see gastric PM goes like this, but this part shows intragastric protrusion. So this lesion, upon CT scan may look like uh, may look like uh, the pancreatic mass but it is really originated from gastric wall uh, probably muscular layer and then showed uh, intragastric protrusion and also extragastric protrusion too so, so it's likely a cyst yeah likely a huge cyst uh, so 
Any any comment or question on this? So Don Juan, how do you uh, assess if uh, obviously this legion is very large, but yeah. uh, are there any other features that is suggestive of a um, malignancy? malignancy? Yeah. One is the size is also one of the criteria. If it is more than five six cm, yeah, yeah, yeah. the probability actually increase. Definitely. This is already twelve cm yes. around twelve cm, so hugely. And the another feature is the echogenesis, the homogeneity of the legion. Generally, benign gist or leioma, leiomyoma shows uh, homogeneous echogenicity, but in this case, there are some necrotic, unechoic area, and also increased and uh, decreased echogenicity, heterogeneous mixed pattern. This pattern also suggests uh, the the possibility of malignancy, mm. and uh, if you do contrast enhanced, mm -hmm. uh, I think. Uh, Generally, GIST shows a homogeneous enhancement if it is benign. Mm. But if it is malignant, uh, there will be unechoic necrotic area mm. and the enhancing area mix up. So I think if you add, we can get a little more uh, information on this. So can we inject some contrast uh, uh, to see the contrast enhanced EUS? Mm. Well, since Anthony is here, I'd like to ask you as a surgeon, would you take a biopsy and hopefully give uh, some adrenaline therapy or you go straight ahead for surgery? Yeah, this lesion is quite big um, and uh, there's uh, some uh, uh, the lesion. We also worry about some adjacent organ involvement like the pancreas and so on. So I think uh, for such a lesion, we often would consider a adjuvant uh, glevac mm -hmm. and try to uh, shrink down the tumor a bit before uh, moving on to a surgical resection. Oh, so you biopsy. Yeah, yeah, we will do biopsy, but before that, we want to characterize this lesion by contrast in the US first, and then we will proceed to biopsy. Okay. Now, contrast is ready. We are going to use a second generation sonoview here. Okay, inject. Inject. And then, if you want to see the just uh, enhancing pattern, we need to gain a little bit down. And the uh, enhancement parts generally start from 20. Y you see the yeah, yeah. contrast is going inside here, yes, yes. but there are tumor vessels traversing. But some area shows this kind of well enhancement, uh, homogeneous. But this part, this part, but this area does not show good enhancement. Mm -hmm. uh, as I mentioned earlier, there is mix up of uh, homogeneous mm -hmm. enhanced area and non-enhancing area. Uh, this feature also suggests uh, this lesion is probably malignant, mm. malignant lesion. So yeah. you would say this is heterogeneous enhancement, right? Yes, heterogeneous yeah. mixed uh, enhancement. Okay. And the tumor vessel is uh, very strong. Mm. I mm. think uh, for benign lesions, we cannot see this kind of very strong uh, tumor vessel mm -hmm. and big mm -hmm. tumor vessel. Mm -hmm. But in this case, we can see mm -hmm. quite uh, a yeah. large tumor vessel. So every finding mm -hmm. is suggestive of uh, uh, malignant gist. Mm -hmm. But to c uh, histology is anything cannot replace histology. So of we yeah. better to do US guided biopsy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you use start from linear, we can do everything. E evaluation, contrast, and also biopsy too. Now so this time, because we for gist, we need to get a larger tissue amount if you want to add the immunohistochemical staining. So for this purpose, I'm going to use 20 gauge mm -hmm. Procore C needle, which is uh, recently launched from mm -hmm. a crew company. Can you show it? Okay. And explain so um, this is the uh, Procore needle. It's a 20 gauge needle. It's a new uh, Procore. So as you can see, there's a forward baffle. In the previous version, there's a reverse baffle. Mm -hmm. And uh, it came with uh, 19, 21, and 25 gauge. But now they've changed it in the 20 gauge uh, forward bevel needle. So nowadays um, we are also asking our pathologists to um, not only do the immunohistochemistry, but uh, at the same time we also ask for um, even for mitotic activity. So um, yeah, it's possible. Uh, generally, I use uh, my standard needle is 22 gauge needle, mm -hmm. but this is uh, 20, so a little bit thicker. Than usual needle, mm -hmm. but it shows a very pretty good flexibility. 
But one thing we need to be careful is uh, this is relatively thick needle, so we can, if this needle punctures the vessel, then the field will be very bloody. So try not to puncture the vascular, highly vascular area. Would you so want to puncture an area where the lesion is connected to the stomach, or? Uh, uh, I think that this one is okay. Do you, do you want to do? Do you want to target the intragastric area? Um, yeah, I think in terms of surgical principle, we usually try to resect okay, okay. Um, where it's connected to the stomach. So maybe uh, that's better to avoid the uh, tumor seeding in the future. Yes. Okay, I will follow your instruction. <laughs> mm. This is intragastric part. Yeah. Here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now we'll check the needle position first mm -hmm. and deflate the balloon a little bit mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then try to target okay. the lesion. But this intragastric part is not very stable. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. mm. It goes outside of the gastric wall. Mm. This, this part. Or maybe uh, where I think uh, better to target yeah. the, the, the yeah. area where there was a uh, sort of a yeah, and also the vascularity yeah. is one more the ta the angle mm. and position is not stable, yeah. and the vascularity. Okay, so you you target the uh, extra gastric yes extra gastric part. This okay. part is quite stable. Yeah, yeah. and uh, before needle puncture, we will check the vascular and the non-vascular area. The e-flow function is quite useful to check the, because e-flow can depict some of the micro vessels. So I think uh, this area can be a good target. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. This one. Okay. Yeah, okay. So I'm going to puncture from this. Uh, This is uh, a necrotic area, so better to avoid this necrotic area, but rather solid area. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we are going to apply slow pull method while I'm doing two and pro motion. One, three, four, five, seven, eight. But I don't like this slow pull. <laughs> Many people say that it gives uh, adequate sample, but frequently does not give any sample. Okay? Okay, I think it's okay. Now I'm going to remove the silo and fix it and uh, remove it. Right, thank you very much. It's a very good demonstration of a fine needle biopsy.